Hello everybody, this is Carrying the Banner on Broadway Baby, bringing you the latest Broadway news each week. Let's get started. Nominations were announced for the 66th Annual Prime Time Emmy Awards this year. The 2013 Tony Awards, host by Neil Patrick Harris, picked up a whopping seven nominations, including one for Tom Kitt and Lin-Manuel Miranda for their opening number, Bigger. The highly anticipated May special on HBO, The Normal Heart, based off the play written by Larry Kramer, received an impressive 16 award nominations, including one for writing for Larry Kramer, one for directing for Ryan Murphy, and of course many nominations for some of the stars, including Mark Ruffalo, Julia Roberts, Matt Balmer, and Jim Parsons. The Trip to Bountiful TV movie received nominations for Outstanding Television Movie, and also a Best Actress nomination in a television movie for Cecilia Tyson. There's also nominations for NBC's The Sound of Music Live, the HBO special 700 Sundays with Billy Crystal, and Six by Sondheim by James Lapine. The London musical American Psycho with music by Duncan Sheik from Spring Awakening will be having a U.S. premiere off-Broadway at the Second Stage Theater next year. Previews will start in February 2015 with an opening slate for sometime in March 2015. The musical premiered last year in London starring Doctor Who's Matt Smith. The highly anticipated revival, A Sideshow, has announced plans to come to Broadway as early as this fall. After a run earlier this year at La Jolla Playhouse, Sideshow just ended a run at the Kennedy Center with rave reviews. So it looks like Sideshow's coming back to Broadway. Director Amy Heckerling is an early development for the Clueless musical, of course based off the cult movie from 1995. She has already written a book and lyrics, and has even mentioned that Katy Perry is interested in starring in the show. We'll have to keep an eye on this and see where this goes. Casting has been announced for the upcoming NBC live production of the classic musical Peter Pan. Hollywood and musical star Christopher Walken will be playing Captain Hook, an NBC's adaption of the musical about the boy who never grew up. We're hoping there's more casting decisions too, but it sounds like this year's show will be a hit. Apparently last Thursday, Neil Patrick Harris spit water on a woman after she was disrupting patrons during the show. According to reports, in character during the show, he leaned in, asked the woman if she was drunk. Obviously she was, waving her arms in the air. Neil yelled at her for taking pictures. Later in the show, Harris was spitting water on the audience like he normally does, and said he spat it straight at the woman. There's reports that a lot of people were shocked by this, but apparently according to audience members, this woman kind of deserved it. See, this goes along with my talk last week about disruptive patrons, especially when the stars in the show. If you want to hear more about that, please check out my Carrying the Banner episode from last week. I'll post the link below. The Tony-nominated play The Cripple of Inishman, starring Daniel Radcliffe, will be ending its limited run this Sunday, July 20th. So if you haven't seen the show, make sure to go to catch it. I heard it's very good. Of course, this run started on April 20th, nominated for three Tony Awards. So go see it. In other sad news, um, Holler If You Hear Me, one of my favorite shows of this year, based off of Tupac's music, is closing on Sunday. It's only going to be clocking in at 38 performances and 17 previews. So for the people who did see it, you know that there's so much work went into the show. It's so creative. Kenny Leon, who directed it, had an amazing vision for this. It basically brought not only Tupac's music to the stage, but his message of tolerance and peace. This show is very edgy. It had a great creative team, great cast of Broadway stars like Tanya Pinkins, Ben Thompson, Christopher Jackson, had poet Saul Williams, who's fantastic, and then also had a lot of people making their Broadway debut who were dancers and singers in the hip-hop industry. I feel like so many good people with did work into the show and now it's just shuddering because of lack of support, lack of funds. And I'm just really sad because I think this show should have lasted longer. You know what? I don't think it should have lasted longer. I'm just saying there's a lot of edgier musicals and a lot of musicals that kind of take a risk and try to present new material. And I feel like a lot of the time they don't fit the stereotype on Broadway and so audiences don't take the chance to go out and see it. 
so they kind of flounder because they don't get support. Honestly, it was a really great show. I don't think critics understood it. I read many reviews, including the New York Times, and they said that they just keep preaching this inner city crime and all these different um, stories from Tupac's life and how they don't relate to the audience and it became preachy. However, I don't think they understand that these stories need to be told. One, because majority of the audience when I went was white and people like me, we grew up in suburban neighborhoods. We did not grow up in the ghetto inner city and we do not know truly how how this black on black crime affected people and tore these families apart. And I think too, it was important because I know now we're trying to tell a lot of stories that relate to a modern audience. And I feel like this is a very modern story. What's different about this show is a lot of these events could take place right now, even though a lot of Tupac's influence was in the 90s. Any of the situations in that story could happen right now, 2014. It was very real, and I think it was important, definitely people in my generation, to see this. I know Holler If You Hear Me definitely tried. They did Occupy Broadway. They did a lot of press and media, and they tried to get the show going, but people did not go out and see the show and didn't have the financial backing. And a lot of times, very good Broadway shows don't last because they lack support, they get harsh reviews, and they're kind of misjudged and misunderstood. So at this point, there's nothing really we can do but support the show. If you have time to go see it before Sunday when it closes, please go see Holler If You Hear Me. Get tickets, I'll post it below. This is truly one of my favorite shows I've ever seen in New York. I've seen over 30 shows in New York, including the Tony Awards. By far, this is probably one of my favorite musicals I've ever seen. One more bit of news before I go. As you know, summer on Broadway, there's a lot of events going on. And one of the biggest events is Broadway and Bryant Park. Broadway brings a free show to Bryant Park every Thursday of the summer, July through the end of August. This show takes place on the lawn from 12.30 to 1.30. Broadway and Bryant Park brings out the best of Broadway, off-Broadway, and upcoming shows to Broadway this fall. Now, even though Broadway and Bryant Park has already commenced, I'm going to read the schedule off of the remaining shows for the rest of the summer. So here we go. Thursday, July 17th, you can catch the 2013 winner for Best Revival, Pippin, along with the long-running Chicago, the new revival of Les Mis, and Atomic the Musical. Thursday, July 24th, you can catch the longest-running show, Fam of the Opera, along with off-Broadway hits, Peace of My Heart and Avenue Q, Rogers and Hammerstein Cinderella, and the new musical, Bullets Over Broadway. Thursday, July 31st, you can catch Rock of Ages, the 2012 winner for Best Musical Once, the off-Broadway hit, The Summer Heathers, and the 2014 winner for Best Musical, Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Starting off August, on August 7th, you can catch the musical now turned movie, Jersey Boys. My favorite show of the summer, Hall If You Hear Me. Fifty Shades of Musical, playing off Broadway. And Cabaret. And on Thursday, August 14th, the last Broadway and Bryant Park Thursday, you can catch Matilda the Musical, the upcoming production of On the Town, Mamma Mia, and Motown the Musical. And I'll be posting a link below. Please sure to check out the schedule and don't miss your favorite performers in Bryant Park. To check out these stories and more, be sure to check out Broadway.com, BroadwayWorld.com, Playbill, and many other sites online where you get your Broadway news. I'll be posting below the link to Cripple of Inishman and Holler If You Hear Me. Please go support those shows as they end their run this Sunday. And be sure to tweet out Facebook some love for Holler If You Hear Me and show your support for this show using hashtag Occupy Broadway. I just came back from a trip to New York, my final trip of the summer, and I saw four shows. So make sure to check out in the next couple weeks, I'll be releasing four new review episodes. This time around, I'll be reviewing the 2013 winner for Best Musical, Kinky Boots, the big jukebox hit this year, Beautiful, the Carol King musical, the ever-favorite movie, Rocky, the musical, and finally, the 2013 winner for Best Revival, Pippin. Please subscribe to this channel, and I will see you next Monday on Carrying the Banner. Thank you so much for watching.